The DC Radio Show with Darren Katrupi. Darren Katrupi. Darren Katrupi. The DC Radio Show on Valley FM 89.5. Valley FM 89.5. Kate, welcome. Thank you. Hi. Uh, why have you come to the Multicultural Festival? Well, I feel very honoured to have been asked in the first place, actually, and the face of Multicultural Australia is indeed a great privilege and a great honour, and one I think that I've probably spent a whole lifetime working um, in a career to be something worthy of. Uh, my father was a Filipino immigrant, um, well, his grandfather was to Hawaii, and then from Hawaii he came to Australia. My mother's Swedish heritage, and um, we have Portuguese and Spanish and all number of different other bloodlines that run through me. So I do think I'm like the face of modern Australia. What sort of influence did, did you get from your parents um, that you think are still with you today in, in, in I suppose, the successful career and, and life you've had, not just as a singer and entertainer, but, but as a mum and, and, yeah. and, and a sister? And Well, I suppose that... Uh, the most significant part of me that's been inherited um, is, the, is the generous nature of my parents and my grandparents who we invited many, many people from all over the world to often come and stay with us. We had a, um, an exchange student and we had, um, who often came, we had exchange students should I say and we sponsored a young woman from the Philippines and we had a uh, martial artist come over from Hawaii and some South Australia, so South African students come and stay and often, you know, they come for a week and spend six months. So I think what we had was this great spirit of um, uh, welcome and I think that's part of what propels me to do what I do because I, I love entertaining people. I do it not because I hope to gain anything from it myself but instead I hope that others gain a great deal and are, and are highly entertained and and I suppose too there's something about my family, a very romantic family. Um, I think it's important to continue to have this communication, this live dialogue with people and learn about people and keep an open heart and an open mind towards different ways and different ways of thinking. You're not always going to agree with it, mm. but you can respect it. And that's something that is a real pleasure, I imagine, in, in your job, that you get to travel so much and, and, and learn so much from not just uh, one culture, but so many of them. Well, that's it. You know, it's, it's definitely, you, you trade, you give and trade different things about yourself and then um, they in turn give you things about themselves as well. I mean, learning dances in the Filipino community, uh, the cultural dances as a kid held me in good stead for when I went later on to Dancing with the Stars. I mean, yes. you, you would think that was a stretch, but it isn't actually because from the flam from the Filipino music, which had Spanish music in it, yep. I went on to flamenco dancing and then went later on into being interested in all sorts of dance. Mm. But, and um, yeah, I think interacting with a lot of the, uh, especially the second generation Australians who who clearly don't see themselves as having come from the home their, their, their homeland any more than they consider Australia to be their home. Mm. I think that they're fascinating. I love learning about how they're creating their lives here and and how what things they've had to sort of change about their parenting and in terms of, you know, some of the Greek families may have had a very strict parenting and then yep. when they've now had children themselves, they've decided not to do it quite in that way. Yep. All of those things are fascinating as a parent. I learn a lot about that. Um, you mentioned Dancing with the Stars, of course the winner, but um, I believe from my uh, bit of research that it was not the number one show that year, it was beaten by the, AR, uh, the AFL and NRL Grand Finals well, only. Uh, there you go. <laughs> um, are you angry at those sports and do you, do you follow them? <laughs> no, I'm not angry at those sports because I felt in every way the winning, the, I, had the, I had the golden ticket, you know, yes. I, I just don't... I can't fault that experience for having... It was one of the highlights of my career. <laughs> now, you've, you've obviously been on, on the stage, and when I say the stage, not necessarily just for singing, but the acting and, and theatre. Is is that just a progression in your, your career? Is that something you want to continue to do? or? Well, coming back to a multicultural thing, you know, 
uh, when I was a child, I wanted to be an actress, but didn't think that there were many roles available for women of my colour. Yep. And I've discovered that by just simply continuing to have an interest in music and musical theatre, uh, roles have been created for me or roles have come back in into vogue. For yep. instance, I just played, you know, Bloody Mary in South Pacific and there's a there's a great deal you can do by being able to be a woman of colour. Yep. Um, great stories to tell, you know, yep. because there, there's many trials and tribulations to that. And having success is that, at that, does that spur you on to continue looking for those roles and creating those roles? Because, you know, there, well, there is that... Well, certainly, yeah. The modern woman today is going... Well, the woman in the next 80 years will end up possibly looking more like me than they look like the average yep. Anglo woman. It's, it just, it's just it happens to be a fact of life, you know. We sort of... We're all meeting in the middle. <laughs> as long as they don't look like me, they will do all right. <laughs> you know, I'm a big advocate. First of all, I, I, I'm a great lover of history. I'm the area of human rights and equality and, you know, uh, goodwill is very important to my family and I. I yep. I've grown up with a, a grandmother who was a great fan of Gandhi and Buddha and, mm. you know, we're very, in many ways, quite spiritual and, but moreover, I, I was, I was looking, I was just been in America, I was looking at those Declaration of Rights and it's quite amazing how over 180 years, I think they were last, that's yep. when they were written, it holds as true then as it holds today, today yeah. and the emancipation of people who are under, you know, who are in bondage and things, this is, mm. in, it's as important as it ever was. Someone like Martin Luther King, for instance, we, I don't think we've had as, as many brave soldiers in my lifetime, mm. I haven't seen enough of them, and, yep. and I just hope to use anything that I've learnt in my career and use this platform to to try to breathe that kind of virtue in myself and others. Uh, have you got to see Lincoln yet, which has a very oh, powerful no. story? No, I haven't, but I've watched an HBO special on John Adams, who yep. I found I found that special to be very enlightening on many levels, because it doesn't have to, you don't have to be a great charismatic, you don't have to be good looking, or you don't have to be a certain weight, yep. you don't actually have to look in any way to be actively powerful in your mm. community, and that's what I don't know. I think we're in a time now where, and certainly with a you know a black American president and all these other things, we've never been more poised to have a revolution yep. on on a cultural level mm. that has great meaning and and has has only the peace of all nations. Yep. Do you think uh, a female president is the next move for Australia? Uh, sorry, for America. We've got the female prime minister here with Julia, but well, like I said, I, I don't think it's any sex or colour is required. I just think it's got to be in the kind of person and their kind of mm. ideas. It's ideas is what we're craving. We, yep. we need people who are who are able to make decisions and. You know, I, I would love to live in a culture that is that doesn't bear maybe, it's just yes or it's just no. Yep. <laughs> now, uh, be before we let you go and uh, get up on stage uh, here tonight at the National Multicultural Festival, uh, I see with great excitement you do have a new album coming out this year. What can you tell us? I've recorded a very beautiful album full of original songs and in many ways, it's it's again, it's, it's this great sort of, it, it holds a torch for women of my age in this country because It'll be my 21st album, 20, 21st album, yep. I think in total, maybe I made 20 seconds, some of which hadn't all been released. But this will be my first with Sony Records and, you know, I'm just now 46 years old and I think, well, that's just, what a way to go, you know, you just continue to have a career and, um, and continue to break through fixed ideas about, well, like I said, you don't necessarily have to be a certain colour or yep. creed or or a certain amount of kilos. It's just, yeah. It can happen for you on many levels. Y your albums have, 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 have developed over the years and the sound. W what can we expect this time around? I just hope that it's very honest and it has in it a certain quality that rings true for people. I've written it about my stories on the road and my longings for family and my depressions for being away from people I love and in the pursuit of passion. It's, it's sort of like it's a double-edged sword really because mm. it's it is part of my um, it's part of my life that I'll be without on many occasions but then when I'm with and I have such an abundance you know even just today three generations are here with my mother and my daughter just because we could come together it was close to home I'm never happier than when I'm surrounded by family sounds like the angst of love is probably an apt sort of yeah, description of it yeah and I think there's a lot in the album in the 
content of the album for people to really connect with and and actually kind of its its intention is to be empathetic and kind of wrap you up with love and and make the listener feel assured that that's just life. Okay, so Brian, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for coming to Canberra. Oh, thank we you. love having you here and uh, thanks for joining us on the DC <laughs> Radio Show. It's a pleasure. Thank you.